So I bought this building almost four years ago now and have done a ton of renovations in here. It was a really old building and needed a lot of work. And over the course of the four years, there's been quite a number of incidents that have been a little hard to explain. So my business is Fanjoy. I have a restaurant and a marketplace, and I run a junior chef program. So everything that we do in this space is about improving the lives of youth um, mentally and physically using food and food events. Once my staff started saying that they were sensing something, I thought, well, maybe there might be something more to this. What's an example? Staff members have actually told me that they've seen shadows, um, mostly in the kitchen area. I had a dishwasher once who um, said probably three or four times that she felt that there was a real presence and that uh, she would feel it get quite cold. Um, I myself in the kitchen area, many times on a Sunday after the staff have left for the day, I'll stay back and do my paperwork for the week. And sometimes I go in the kitchen just to do inventory and figure out what specials I want to do for the upcoming week. and. Sunday afternoons tend to be a pretty active time. I've many times felt like there was someone watching me. Um, at the beginning, I thought it was maybe just because it was the last day of my work week and I was tired and seeing things. But it's, it's happened more times than I can dismiss. Do you believe in spirits or ghosts? I do now. <laughs> We're here today at Fanjoy Restaurant, and the food here is amazing. Um, we're here in Hillsburg, Ontario. Fanjoy is a neighbor of the School of Mediumship and Spiritual Studies, so we're excited to be local today. Um, it's an old building, it's got a lot of history, a lot of things have happened in this place, so we're pretty excited to investigate it. We're excited, yes. And uh, let's go do that. So when we first arrived, I definitely got drawn into mostly this wall, but then also the corner. And I think it's mostly uh, just the memories of the space, a lot of imprints. I'm getting a lot of, uh, I, I would assume that if there was a butcher here before, like you had mentioned, that this is where there would have been a chopping or I, I'm getting a lot of the chopping, the beating, the, the sludging of meats. So um, I'm just getting a lot of in that space. There are a lot of heavy memories. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we talk about the word imprints and, and what imprints are, are sort of memories held within a space. It's the memory of space. And so things that have gone on somewhere, people that have lived there, um, occurrences in and around that space, all of that energy is held within the bones of a place. And if you're sensitive, you can pick up on it. So what Don's talking about is things that have gone on here before and your ordinary person might not be able to recognize what that is, but Dawn can tune into what that feels like to her. So for me, when I uh, came into this space, the first thing I wanted to look at was this sort of old antique window looking thing, which is beautiful, gorgeous in every way. But the sense that I got from it straight away is that the vibration that it holds is a little bit of, um, a, little bit of a mismatch for this space, almost like it doesn't quite feel at home. And so when you pick up or use uh, old items or antiques, especially um, uh, items that have belonged to other people or different places, again, just like a place, objects hold vibration, they hold information, they hold energy, and um, we can often clear the energy and bring something into a neutral state um, or perhaps even higher than that. Um, but sometimes folks just indiscriminately bring old things into their space um, because they're not aware of energy and that's okay but the sense that I have about this object right here is that it's a bit of a it's sort of incongruent to the energy of this place but I do feel like it could be sort of worked on and cleared so that it fits uh, more like a glove to this space and it's more of an appropriate fit for it so 
Um, we might help to, to do that today or we might come back to do that, but um, it, it's beautiful and looks lovely, so it's worth working on making an energetic fit for this place. Because mm -hmm. aesthetically, it's beautiful. It fits really nicely with the, with the overall aesthetic. So yeah, it would be nice to be able to clear it and keep it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a huge draw to this back kitchen area. Feels like it's suctioning me in. I'm curious to see what I'm gonna be able to pick up here. So this is an area that uh, Chef Pam talked about maybe feeling like she might have something with her or sort of watching her. Um, as soon as I come into this area, I feel that immediately. Um, the space that I'm drawn to straight away is this carved out little pantry looking thing. Um, Pam had mentioned that they, this wasn't, I guess, like this initially, that they had carved it out to create more of a storage space and they actually found some artifacts back there from probably maybe like original construction or something along those lines. I do feel like that space um, originally, uh, I just have this imprint of like, just a real sort of cold feeling. Um, and I do feel like a male energy connected with this space. I feel like it also moves behind walls um, in this location, further back, going up, um, like, you know, spirits can walk through walls. They don't need to open doors, but it just, it feels like there's a spirit connection there. So there's a, there's a sort of discarnate spirit. So someone that isn't like a family member of someone who works here, this is like someone that their time has come and gone and it's time for them to move on. Um, I do feel like they feel, they feel like they have some kind of proprietary like ownership over certain areas of this building. Um, and it feels like a pretty strong spirit. So we'll probably have some work cut out for us today. Uh, and that's all right, because we're up for it. But uh, yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely something here. I would, I would be willing to bet that more than just, more than just Pam would have experienced the feeling of someone looking at them, watching them. All right. So energy-wise, the way that the, the flow of the energy, it's really stagnant here. There's really no place for it to go. So um, there's definitely some calling for, you know, increasing the circulation, flushing everything out. But funny enough, there's this extra little bit of presence here where um, I feel like someone's looking around, but maybe a smaller person. And I can't actually define whether or not it's a, a spirit or some other type of entity, you know what, it actually reminds me of Gollum, but in a pleasant way, like in a playful, sweet way. Did Hi. I just hear you talk about something, maybe about half the height of your body? Yeah, and I'm trying to figure out if it's male, female, a spirit, what it is. I just had that exact same experience, so I, when I heard you say that, I thought <laughs> we need to come talk about that. Yeah, um, yeah I need to find out what that is too because it sort of like peered at me from behind um, the door frame mm -hmm. and it was like half of my height. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so interesting. interesting. Yeah. All right. I'll have to figure that out. Okay. Mm Yep, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff down here. Okay. Between the objects, yeah, <laughs> between the objects and just the those low light places. Yeah. Um, I, there's there are definitely uh, actually that. Actually, it may not be that many. It might just be this one. I just have this sense like that that strange half height energy mm -hmm. that I actually believe is also what's in that little kitchen space. Um, definitely comes down to this place. Mm -hmm. um, so that's okay. We don't actually need to do our work from down here, no. but um, 
Yeah, it's, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of there's a lot of energy, and um, I mean, Don, I think you were talking about how like about the flow of energy mm -hmm. and how we again there's like we have a lot of blocks happening, right? A lot of blocks. Yes. yes. Okay. A lot of settling. All right, let's yeah. go and discuss that upstairs then. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to attempt to clear this strange, small sort of man energy that's here mm -hmm. because we need to make sure that he isn't what we're going to pick up everywhere else. Um, and his time's come and gone. I do feel like he was a human that occupied this space at some point, um, but he doesn't need to be here anymore. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is always our work that people can't see what's happening. Uh, Don and I just might look a little strange for a couple of minutes, <laughs> but we're doing some work sort of behind the scenes that you can't see to um, help this person on their way because they have a soul journey too. Um, even though we don't want them here, you know, they, they have a right to move on to and sometimes uh, we need help doing that. And so that's what we're gonna do today. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just gonna come over to that crawl space area there. So I just feel like we need to focus ourselves right in there. The energy of this thing being is very cold and damp. I'm getting a lot of like muddy blues and black and brown. And yeah. Yeah. I do feel like this, as I mentioned, is a person that was here alive at some point, and I do feel like there was like he experienced some kind of a shunning or like a disownership or discaring of family. Um, doesn't have too many folks that he's interested in connecting with on the other mm -hmm. side. moved on how, his how journey. Do you know? How do you know? Uh, well, we experience it differently. For me, I experience it visually. I'm clairvoyant, so I can see. And so for me, there's a moving on of the energy out of this time and space. And for me, it goes out into the cosmos. It's also a soul knowing that this energy is no longer present here. How do you experience that? This time it was very similar. I felt the movement up, but in slower, like yeah. smoke. It was slow-mo. Yeah, it was slow-mo. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, a soul knowing that he's gone. feels tippy up here. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm tipping sideways. Okay. Um. Okay. Oh, 
it's pretty up here. Mm -hmm. You can feel your vibrant energy. <laughs> yeah. You can feel the intention. Mm -hmm. Here. Okay. So, okay. Some stuck energy happening mm -hmm. here. So bef a few days ago, I got the sense that, um, now I have never been here, but um, I felt like there would be one corner. Mm -hmm. Is the kitchen right underneath us? Bathrooms. Or the bathrooms? The bathroom okay. Right underneath you. So I had this vision of a corner that was um, needing something red in a feng shui sense okay. um, to boost productivity, to bring groundingness, um, increase financial abundance and uh, when we were downstairs originally I thought it was where the butcher was but it wasn't what my vision was a few days ago okay and now that we're up here I totally see why that's the corner that I um, I actually ended up bringing um, a little gift for you and we're gonna put it in there to uh, to balance and, and help with the energy flow in this space awesome yeah because it needs it over here mm -hmm. <laughs> all right Oh wow, okay. Yeah. That feels nice. Yeah, nice. That <laughs> feels good in here. Mm -hmm. This is my space. Yeah, we're just Beautiful. we're not used to that <laughs> places that we're visiting, but yeah, that feels really nice. Um, mm -hmm. even a lot of the objects feel feel mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Yeah. And that feels right and good, right mm -hmm. in that spot. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's lovely. Yeah, I'm not picking up on any object. No, nothing's catching my attention. It feels really mm -hmm. nice in here. Really nice, Pam. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, even in there, I mean, it feels just fine. So was that, was that here already, the stained glass? The previous owner installed that. Yeah. Uh, the woman who sold me the building. Yeah. Who's always been a mentor and really had faith that I could take this building that yeah. she had bought for her son many years ago oh, and okay. do something with it as a community hub and service. I love that piece. Me too. Yeah, it's a perfect spot. Um, I just, you know what I just feel here, which I can't really provide commentary on, but I think probably you could, Don, okay. is just from an energy flow perspective, maybe some feng shui in the room happening there. I feel like, I feel like I kind of want to go to sleep when I go in there, which is fine for mm -hmm. a room, but I feel like it needs a little more life. A little more life. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's, but it, yeah, it's a very calm, tranquil, subdued. Yeah. Um, but you definitely could have a little bit more, especially in this corner here. Yeah. That's where I was feeling that. Yeah. There. Yeah, we could definitely, um, I definitely wouldn't recommend a mirror, of course. I don't know if you were ever thinking of putting one there. I wouldn't. Um, I would actually just, if I'm tuning into, like, feng shui-wise, we actually have to calculate the, the uh, age of the building, the age of the owner, um, and then the sitting and facing directions of the home before we can really decide what directions and what places in the building are suited for both of you to merge together and be, you know, in sync with one another but just tuning in i would say to to add more wood elements so like a plant or um something in this area here now you have water here and water on that side so i think that it would just help to balance the flow wood in um, pieces it doesn't actually in feng shui it doesn't actually count you would need a living source so uh, like a hanging plant or something in this area there's enough light for it to survive and then with the water flow it would really just help with uh, with that great yeah so when I feel like there's nothing catching my attention it can feel just like nothingness nothing is registering anywhere in any of my faculties um, and in this case nothing is registering except what is registering on some level just feels um, 
it feels nice and appropriate for this space. Nothing concerning, nothing that might need help, except for a bit of a, like a block and sort of balance, uh, an imbalance of energy in that room right there. How about you, Dawn? Um, pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, you know, when, if we weren't tuning into the space, I think it would just feel like how everyone else walks into a space. And I think anyone can pretty much agree that sometimes when you walk into a space, it feels good and sometimes maybe not so good. And it's something that we might not even pay attention to, but here, yeah, it's feels good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I get a hit on something that's a lower vibration, it can register anywhere through my energy field or my physical body. So I can feel, I could feel a headache or a draw or a sort of vacuum or suction pull to an area. Often I'll feel a little bit of a, uh, sort of like a hit in my in my gut area um, other times it's just a knowing other times it's visual um, i know for both don and i we're clairvoyant clairsentient clairaudient claircognizant so we can see stuff feel it hear it know it so it registers in any one of those ways for both of us mm -hmm. yeah i thought we were scot-free <laughs> able to leave the space with nothing really catching our attention and on our walk out lo and behold this print mm -hmm. um, this feels like it has a bit of a weird, a <laughs> little bit of a lower energy, but definitely strange. Um, and I don't like the energy of this looking back at me when I'm leaving the space. Um, just a bit of a strange, a strange little twinge it gives me. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion is, in fact, not even to just move it to a different location in the house, but actually just to sort of part ways with it. That's the sense that I have from it. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't fit. It's not a good match for the energy of this place and even the print itself just inherently has a particular vibration to it that is sitting on the lower scale for me. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, she certainly doesn't look happy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's not the most comfortable feeling when you're being, when you're approaching it and it's looking at you that That's way. That's right. So I, I completely agree. There's, there's a mismatch there there's of mismatch the energy. There. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think that the, that we're going to, it's not a matter of clearing it. It's, mm -hmm. it's with, whenever the, like the original production of this is the energy that went into that mm -hmm. originally, mm -hmm. even though this is probably a print that vibration carries through. So time for it to go. Okay, Pam, so Don and I have gone through the entire building, and actually, surprisingly, uh, we really only encountered one thing um, in, in terms of the sort of spiritual aspect that really needed our assistance and our attention, uh, but we've done that, and um, we both feel that you're going to feel a difference immediately. Um, you might already. Um, so that's great. I know that there were some energy flow things happening in terms of feng shui or the arrangement of uh, sort of rooms within the space. And, and I think that that's going to continue to need some attention. Um, but in terms of what we were here to do today, uh, it feels successful on our end. Um, how do you feel about any sort of follow up with feng shui or energy flow? Well, I'd be really curious, especially with how I picked up on wood there and then uh, fire in the far entrance on the upstairs, the far on the far corner. Um, I'd be curious to actually do the, the plan for you. Find out the, the, the age of the building and use your, your birth date as well and, and see how you and the building coexist and what, how you match up energetically and then help you with that energy flow in here to keep it flowing properly, make it prosperous for you and keep it happy and healthy. Yeah, another follow-up will be that antique window as well. So we didn't have an opportunity to do clearing work on it today, um, but we'd happy to be happy to come back and do that at some point, or you might attempt to do that yourself, and then we can check in on it and see how it's feeling now. So just give us some of your sort of thoughts and feedback watching how the sort of day has unfolded here, Pam. Oh, it's been terrific. Thank you so much for coming and being a part of my space. It's so important to me because of the work that I do here and because it really is intended to reach out and make our community better that the energy in the space here is flowing the way it needs to. And um, as I'm learning more about energy myself, I certainly know what I pick up and that I'm a very sensitive person. Um, so I already feel a difference walking into my kitchen now. Uh, for quite a while, I've felt a heaviness every time I walk in there it's been concerning to me because I'm a chef and I love what I do, but every time I walked into the kitchen, it felt almost smothering, choking, a heaviness. And uh, when I just came out of there now, I didn't have that feeling. So something definitely has been cleared and
and I think that's awesome. Upstairs is my home and is really also very important for me because I spend a lot of my time down here in the restaurant. And when I do leave the restaurant, I need to refuel, recharge and relax. And my space that I've created to live up there is something that I've put a lot of care into examining what feeds my soul. And I was glad to hear that you felt that as a positive uh, space. Super. Thanks so much for having us here. Thanks. Uh, how you feel like there are things in your way here. Mm. Um, because you're, you're sensitive, you need to put trust that. And if there's something that feels like it's blocking you in your way, either move it to another place or get rid of it. Because the space upstairs that you designed yourself had beautiful energy. Mm -hmm. And I know that you've brought in a decorator here who does it very beautifully in an aesthetic way, but there's not that natural instinct there, I think, for the way that the flow of energy is down here. So if and when you do come across that feeling that you're, something's in your way, something's blocking you, if it's a chair or anything, just move it out of the way and see how it feels. Yeah. I think one of the things that's happened in my career as a chef as a second career is I began by buying someone else's business for the space of the kitchen. And I inherited a lot of stuff, a lot of things. And there are a lot of things that I moved to this building from the old building that weren't even mine. They were from that previous owner. And so I've spent really six months now trying to get rid of things that don't serve me anymore and yeah. that I don't love and that don't reflect who I am as a person and it's it's just been a really big job and uh, I found that the more people bring their stuff physical stuff to me to take care of I don't want it um, and energetically I don't think it's good for me because I actually like to live pretty simply and I like to have things around me that are wood and live and bright and cheerful and um, so I'm realizing now how sensitive I really am to my space. And that's why my apartment is the way it is and um, is quite calming for me. Mm -hmm. Good.